Hi. Well, I'm not here today. I'm going to get you started on the activity that you're going to be working on in my absence. You're going to be working on Ready, Set, Go. And you'll notice you have a number of uh, examples here. I'm going to get you started because some of us might get a little tripped up. So don't be intimidated by the notation, first of all. So we're going to take a look here at number one. It's telling me f of n equals 12. So remember, n is my input. 12 would be my output. So what I'm looking for is an output of 12, which I can find on my table here. So I go to f of n, and then I'm looking for 12. And it is right here. Now, what is my input when my output is 12? 5. So that means f of 5 would equal 12. In this case, n would equal 5, because n is my input. So when you see n here, you're going to be solving for the input. You've got to figure out which input is going to give you that output. Now, the next one is a little trickier, which is why I want to go over it with you. Once you get the hang of it, though, it's not bad. Now, it's telling me what is the value of f of n minus 1. Now, if you remember, I already solved for n up here. I already did that, which is good. We like that. I got n equals 5. So I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to plug in 5 for n. When I do that, f of 5 minus 1, do some quick math. Hey, that gives me 4. So, all right, they're telling me if I have an input now, because 4 is my input. If I have an input of 4, what would be my output? So I'm going to go up here, find my 4, and then my output right below it, 7. So it equals 7. So the value of f of n minus 1 equals 7. And that would be my final answer. And I'll even circle it, too, just because I wrote some stuff here. There we go. Now, hopefully you noticed something here. We started at 5. And then, when we had n minus 1, it took us to the previous value. That's not a coincidence. When you have f of n minus 1, that takes you to the previous value. Now, chances are you've heard previous value before. Because when I say previous and next, you would say... This is where you would all say recursive. So essentially, this is what would help us write a recursive formula, being able to use this terminology. So I'll walk us through the second one, too, so you can get an idea. I'll do one more. So this one says f of n equals 17. So since f of n equals 17, that means it's an output. I'm going to go to my table here. I'm going to look for an output of 17. Awesome, I got it. And when 17 is my output, 6 is my input. So that means my input here, or n, would have to equal 6. And now, okay, again, they're asking me, what is the value of f of n minus 1? Now, f of n minus 1 is just asking for the previous input. So if I plug in 6, that would give me 5. So now that gives me an input of 5. So they're asking me if my input is 5 right here. What is my output? 12. Hmm. Now, not all these are going to be asking you for the previous value, but a number of them are. You will notice here, it's going plus 1. I'm not going to go to the previous value. Let's see. So if I'll even show you this one. If I have f of n equals 32, I'm going to circle 32 as my output. And then my input here is 9. So that would mean f of 9 equals 32. So I mean my input is 9. Now, what is the value of f of n plus 1? I'm going to take n, plug it in. 9 plus 1. And that gives me f of 10. So now since 10 is my input, because remember the input goes in the parentheses, I go up to my table here. f of 10. Output of 37. So my answer here would be 37. And that's what you're going to end up doing for the rest of these examples. Your goal is that you want to be able to find your inputs and then use the terminology to find the next input, that the input they're referring to and then find the corresponding output. 
All right. You'll also see that you have some examples down here, too. And this is comparing explicit and recursive formulas expressions. You'll notice they give them to you in each example. Here they're going to give you y equals 3x plus 7. And they also give you the recursive formula of now the previous term plus 3. So now they want you to find the value of the fourth term. You can use any of these formulas. Now I'm looking here and I'm thinking, hmm, I can either do 3x plus 7, which means substitute the 4, or I can just take the previous term and add 3. I like that idea. So 16 plus 3 gives me 19. So there you go, I found the value of this. And now they're asking me, which one would I use? I used recursive. And the reason why? Less calculation. You might find some that might be easier to just plug something in. Like for the next one here, for number 8, let's take a look. Again, give me the same formula. They want me to calculate the 50th term. I am not going to go through my table and add 3 50 times. That's crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just substitute my input. y equals 3 times 50 plus 7. y equals 157. And there we go. I found it. What did I use and why? I used this time explicit. And the reason why I'm going to put is too many steps for recursive. So you're going to be completing the rest of these examples as well. It's going to be part of your assignment today. So hopefully me walking through these few examples will give you a good jump start. And if you have trouble, you can always come back to this video and see, okay, what did Mr. Gamash do and how can I apply this to what I'm doing? Hope this helps.